What I meant was this, the new Fiat Panda. It doesn't have a Yobbo body kit or a map of a track on the dash. And although its engine is turbocharged, it's only a 0.8 litre two-cylinder that makes a modest 84 horsepower. Yet, I believe this car is more fun than the Corsa. It's not actually about how much power you have, it's about how much power you can use. And in this, you can use pretty much all of it, all of the time. Uh. <laughs> Look, I like sitting five millimetres above the road in a 500 horsepower supercar as much as anybody else. Whee! But skinny tyres and a roly-poly body, that's fun. The lack of grip means that more of the time you're driving this car at the edge, even at quite normal speed, and it's at the edge where things become absolutely tremendous. Ooh, a bit of swirling. And as for that engine, well, it may be tiny, but it packs a punch. And it sounds just brilliant. Oh, I love that thrumming noise. It's such a happy sound. It's a bit like a dog running around with a frisbee in its mouth, going, come on, come on, come on, come on. Throw the frisbee, throw the frisbee. And the cost of this bundle of fun? Around £11,000 half the price of the Corsa. However, there is a potential problem with a small-engined car. Here's the stick, taking the Panda from naught to 70 and back to naught again. He did that, according to the wheel distance in 305 metres. But the big question is, how does a small engine car like this cope when it's weighed down with people? Now, if it's just the stick, then it makes no odds, as you can see quite clearly. But if it's normal members of the public, then I think we may have a problem. You see, according to the newspapers, more than a quarter of adults are now obese. And in just a few years' time, over 50% of the population will be absolutely enormous. So, what could a typical...